Welcome to this week's Lunch and Learn. March will be scripting month. Okay? This is being recorded. You are muted uh, to cut down on the background noise. Use the chat window to ask questions. I will look for questions at the end of the lecture. Lunch and Learns are sponsored by yours truly, Dan Hotka, an Oracle Ace Director. And uh, this is my way of sharing technology amongst the Oracle community. There's my short disclaimer. I am an Oracle Ace Director. This is a cool title that Oracle gave to me uh, several years ago now. And one of our charters is to share technology amongst the masses. I like to do these lunch and learns. You can see me at almost all the major um, shows coming up. I will be at the Collaborate show. I do have a new features presentation that has been accepted there. Um, I've been around the Oracle community for a long time. I like doing these lunch and learns. Um, I'm watching for, um, I'm working on another book deal, so I have 13 books here shortly. I do blog regularly, and today's topic and next week's topic are based off of blogs that I've put up on Toad World, and I'll make reference to those. I do training for a living. If you see anything here of interest, uh, please let me know. Uh, the examples from today's Lunch and Learn did come from my scripting class. I have a two-day scripting class as well. Welcome to come on site over the web. I got uh, fixed pricing training, okay? The, the more you have in the class, the more cost effective it is for you. Okay, today's Lunch and Learn. Oh, I forgot to do this script. March is scripting month. We're going to talk about some, some scripts today. Just a couple of short scripts. Okay, on... Today's topic is, is uh, scripting tips and techniques based on a couple of Toad World articles and blogs. Let's look at those. Okay. There we go. We got, there's our scripting basics, which is an article that I wrote um, a couple of weeks ago. It is posted out. We're going to start with just some scripting basics. This, this will format the output in SQL Plus character mode reports. This is also a cool pivot table. Okay, this is one of the ways you can do pivot tables the old way, and old stuff still works. But anyway, right, this is one way to do pivot tables. I'm going to talk about the syntax, the SQL syntax, but I'm more important to show you how the scripts work. The other script that I'm going to talk about is an introduction to some variable handling in SQL Plus, and then we're going to build on this next week. Okay, so the first script that we're going to talk about today is um, the formatting abilities. SQL Plus has formatting abilities, which we're going to talk about in the first script. The second script is a real simple introduction to variable handling. I'm going to show you the output, error handling. We're going to cover output and error handling in this series. First, we're going to start with that cross-reference report. Okay? And let's go back to, uh, and I've got it open here. Here's a better example of it. First off, we see that I've defined a variable, this report, or this variable called RPT date. And I like to do this uh, when I'm bringing variables in from the command line. When you type, when you start this up, uh, whether it's from your scheduler or whatever, this would be SQL plus. At your host, space, at the script name. Space, and today is March 3, 2, 2015. Okay, the space here is the delimiter. This becomes ampersand 1 to this script. I like to do this so that it's self-documenting when it comes in. I will assign those variables a name as they come into the script. Okay, this is what you would use to execute the thing. Now, if you don't put the user ID and password here, you can start SQL Plus up, and the very first thing in here had best be a user ID and password. Usually what I do is I start a script that starts a script, and that script prompts for a password that's hidden so that uh, people don't see it. There's a other technique we may or may not cover in this Lunch and Learn series. Okay, back to the script. 
you started the script. First thing we're going to do, and I typically do this, is I'm going to turn everything off so that the script runs silent. When I'm developing, I'll remark all of these. There's two ways to do remarks. REM is the remark or slash asterisk, just the old programming constraint. I think the C language introduced us to this, but other languages, including PL SQL and SQL Plus, both use this as well. So these, these variables would comment this out. What these variables are doing here is it makes sure that there is no feedback, there is nothing that comes out of the script that will echo to the screen. This is a, a two-pronged approach if you're running this out of a scheduler. Okay, you don't need any output. It's not going to go anywhere anyway. And second, um, if you want it to run silent, you're pulling it out, running it out of another program or something, this is how you get things to run silent. Okay, when you select these variables in your select statement, see I got DEP10, DEP20, DEP30, I got job, whatever you select. So use column aliases down here liberally so that you can give them a little name. SQL Plus is going to see, oh, gee, I got a column format command. There's a format, and there's a heading. And we can make that heading break across two lines if we want, okay? Just by putting a, a vertical bar in there would break this department and put the 10 on the next line. A couple of little techniques there. So we've got some heading formats. I'm formatting the numbers. You can lead with a dollar sign. Um, not have the trailing numbers and give it some decimal positions and it will do all of this nice formatting for you. Okay, We don't need those in this particular example. There's an alpha. You got alpha and numbers. Now, we're going to do some computes here. Okay, and let's look at our result and this will help us. If we look at this, the output looks like this. I just pulled it out, ran it in Toad. Um, but we've got our heading. I'm going to talk about that shortly, but there's our headings. Okay, and there's our numbers formatted nicely in columns. Okay, and then there's our report break. Right there, our report break. That sum, that decode is summing up for the totals. Okay, so let's look, let's go back and look at the code now for our, for our um, pivot table. So now, there's our t-title that gives us our title, and there's two versions of t-title. You just give it t-title, it's going to give you a page number, um, allow you to put a heading in. This one with the left, right, center, allows you to position things a little bit. Okay? Spool. Opens a file on the, on the uh, wherever the script is being run. You can give it full path. That's generally preferable when you're running things from a... Uh, from a scheduler perhaps. And we're going to cover how to make HTML reports running SQL Plus and then you can spool this right to where your web server will pick up a page and you can run this, schedule this to run it hourly so when people click on it they'll have data as of the last hour. That's, this is one way of getting data into, into web pages uh, and not allowing anyone to, to edit anything. They can just see it. So SQL Plus can format that too. We will probably talk about that in a lunch and learn. There's our select statement, okay, with the slash. Notice it doesn't have a semicolon, it has a slash. Slash says run it. This will load into the SQL Plus buffer and it will be executed. There's our sum decode. We're doing a sum and we're going to compute the sum of these columns on report, okay? And then there's the, the sum of the totals, that other column. So we've got, there's our totals column, and we're going to sum all this up, and these are going to sprinkle out across the bottom of the page. When we're done running, we're going to turn the spool off, and then when I'm, this isn't in here, this is how we ex execute the thing, okay? And then I usually remark off the exit. Of course, when you've got it in the scheduler, you want it to exit SQL Plus, so you would uncomment that. But while I'm developing, I don't want to keep having to restart SQL Plus. I can use the two task. I can have it in Notepad. I can have my SQL Plus open and just do a start on this. Edit, start, edit, start. Okay? It works out real well. Okay, the, so this works and this produces this kind of an output, our nice pivot table. Okay? We have got a heading here 
It is 80 columns wide. That is the default. And uh, next week we're going to talk about some scripting techniques. Where I'm going with this and what I'm, where I'm going to end up with this is SQL creating SQL. SQL Plus is very powerful for doing this. And when I work with the other database products, I miss that SQL creating SQL technique that's available with Oracle. Okay? So there's that one. The next one we're going to talk about is this script here. Okay? So simple variable handling. This is a login.sql script. And basically what this does, this particular script, is when it's in the directory that SQL Plus has started from, it will change the prompt. Notice right here, um, we start up SQL Plus, and when it comes in, it's got the name of the server, the name of the database, and the user that's logged in. Back before GUI tools existed, by the way, they came around about Oracle 7 in the early 1990s, um, Windows 3.1. And for those of you who have been around a while, the best thing that I liked about Windows 3.1 is they had a VT220 emulator, and all I had to do is open up a couple, three windows, and I would have a VT220 emulator running three or four terminals on one physical device, and wasn't that cool. Now, we would log in to, to, different, to SQL Plus different ways. This script was very handy because it would show us that. It's a little obsolete but it does tell me about um, variable handling and that's what I wanted to share with you today. So, real simple variable handling. We have a column. This is how you define a variable. New value, inst ID, no print. It's not going to show up anywhere. Okay? We reference this in a SQL statement. We reference this later in the script. When we reference this in a SQL statement, this will get populated. And then we reference this as an ampersand variable. It won't prompt us for it because it already exists. So here, we're selecting our host name. There, we're pasting together that whole prompt, okay, from V$ uh, uh, instance. So you'll need read privileges to this, of course. And you paste this together. And there's the user, puts that, that whole thing, and there's our greater than prompt, puts it in instance ID. There's our column aliases helping us out again, our column aliases. So you select this, and then we reference this later in the script. And I got a double ampersand there, but a single ampersand would work just as well. We're going to set SQL prompt to this, and then, then in my login.sql, anything you want to do, for that SQL Plus environment, you put in here, and it's like a, it's like the um, dot profile to the shell scripting. Okay, it it will run whatever is in here. I usually set my server output on, so I don't have to remember to do it, but it will set that prompt, that SQL prompt, whatever is is working here. What I wanted you to get out of this is variable handling. You you set this, you select this and you reference this later in the script. And we're going to see this technique being used over the next few weeks. Okay? So I, I introduced you to a couple of basic scripts, some SQL plus formatting. I showed you the pivot table. I showed you some variable handling. The slides and link to this presentation will be up on my website shortly. Let everybody know about these presentations. What I've noticed is um, we get a good crowd on these live presentations, uh, a lot of people are watching the replays. So, and do remember me for your training needs. Have a good week, everybody. See you next Monday.